Hello viewers and welcome back to Let's Play Ultima 1, the first age of darkness. Uh, we have been hanging around in the dungeon that we were in and we have managed to get our hit points up over 1000 and we also have just over 1200 coins as well. So we've made a little bit of money. Um, what we're going to do now, um, that should be enough to get us through the first part of the game at the very least. Now we can see here we have an overworld enemy here as well. Um, we haven't encountered any of these yet but we are going to have to fight this gentleman with their mace. It's a necromancer. He's going to hurt us a little bit. Hopefully not too much. I don't want to lose too much HP. Yeah, so we killed him. We still have 987 hit points, so that's fine. We are going to head back to Britain. Now, there's going to be a couple of things that we're going to do here. We are going to speak to Lord British, who lives in the castle. And this is Lord British. Dost thou offer pence or service? So we can, we have a choice here. We can either pay him some money, uh, which will result in him increasing your hit points. That's another way that you can do that if you've got enough money. Um, alternatively, we can offer service, which is what we're going to do. Go forth and find the grave of the lost soul. Do not return until thy quest is done. Okay. So, the Grave of the Lost Soul. And also there's a jester wandering around who has proclaimed that he has the key. That will become important later on. We'll also see the, you might notice down in the bottom right there, there is a prison which contains a princess. That will become important later on. We'll come back to that. For now, Lord British has set us a task of finding the Grave of the Lost Soul. Now, the Grave of the Lost Soul if I remember right, is on an island. So we are going to need some sort of method of getting there. We could we could get a a raft or a frigate. Um I'm I'm not gonna do either of those just yet. I'm we're gonna we're gonna put this mission on hold for a moment, this quest on hold. Uh, I am though going to get a horse just to make it a little easier to travel around. Uh, we're also going to come in here and buy some food from Lil Karelia's Finnish Grocery. Packs of 10 food cost four pence each. Um, so we are going to buy, let me think here, how much money have we got? So we've got 12, 20. Um, so if we got 10 packs of 10 food, that would cost 40. 20 packs of 10 food would cost 80 odds. Have I done that maths right? So if we get 20. Yeah, okay. So now we have we have a bit more food. Um, we can also check here and see if there's any better weapons available. So we do have the option of getting a great sword. Which I think we'll do. And what about the armour? We could buy some plate mail. We have enough money, so there's not really any reason not to. So we will ready our great sword and our plate mail. We will get much better weapons and armour than this later on in the game, but for now, it seems a good start. So, we are going to board our horse, or mount our horse. Um, what this basically does is it means you, rather than using up food like every time you take a step, you now use up food a little less quickly when travelling around the overworld. That, I believe, is a Ness monster. We're going to leave him well alone. Um, now here's another castle. We're still in the we're still in the lands of Lord British, but this is the castle of the Lost King. So if we enter in here. We have another castle here, another king. Let's offer our service to this king. See if he has any other quests for us at the moment. We offer service, king. 
Go now and kill a gelatinous cube. Do not return until thy quest is done. Okay, Lost King. We have to go and kill a gelatinous cube. Now, that is an enemy that we will find in the... Um, in a dungeon, essentially. So there's not really any reason that we shouldn't be able to do that at this point. We could probably go straight to the dungeon and make our way in here to do this. So I think we're going to do that first of all and that will end the process of doing this. Hopefully get us some more hit points and some more coins. So we enter the dungeon of Perinia. Now, there's not really a huge amount of difference between the different dungeons in the game. They're all essentially, they've got a slightly different layout, but the the way they work is still the same. It's just a series of inter interconnected corridors and you can work your way down through a series of floors. We are going to want to get to a gelatinous cube, which will be found on the third and fourth floors. So we can immediately go down or climb down this ladder. And watch out for some skeletons and thieves and all kinds of nastiness that's down here. Giant rats and giant bats. Yeah, there's a skeleton behind us, there's a thief behind us there, there's something else behind us again. Quite often enemies will sneak up behind you and it's slightly problematic sometimes. Uh, oh, hello. Okay, now we need to get down to the next floor. Which will involve finding a ladder. What we're going to do before we go into this floor is ready our skin as our armour. The reason for that, this will cause us to take a bit more damage from enemies, but there's an important reason for that. The reason is the gelatinous cube, the enemy that we are looking for down here, has essentially, if it attacks you, it will it has a pretty high chance of dissolving any armour that you are wearing. And we don't really want to lose our armour permanently, so... Um, We'll take our armour off and attack it without that. It just means we need to be a little bit more careful in terms of watching out for enemies down here. So, so we'll see on this floor, we now have new enemies. This is an orc. We go down to the end of this corridor. We also have a cyclops, a spider. It's a very large spider. Um, sooner or later down here, Oh dear. You know, there's lots of cyclopses around. Sooner or later we should find a gelatinous cube. Now we are taking quite a bit of damage, so we're going to have to be careful with that. And typically we are seeing no gelatinous cubes. There should be one down here somewhere. Hopefully it'll show up before too long. Now this is a, a coffin. We can open the coffin and that will sometimes result in enemies jumping out at us. It'll also sometimes result in us collecting some money. Yeah, there seems to be lots of spiders and cyclopses. None of these are the enemies that we are actually looking for. Which is not useful. I'm not having much luck this time, unfortunately. We need a gelatinous cube and one of them does not want to appear for whatever reason. There must be one somewhere. Okay, what I'm going to do... I'm going to climb out of the dungeon, hopefully restore our hit points. 
Yeah, how do we get out of the dungeon is the question. We've got to ready our armor as well. Um, that will be the plate mail, so we're not taking tons of damage on the way out. Uh, we're going to need to find our way out of here and restore our hit points on exiting the dungeon, hopefully. Hopefully we won't have lost too many. Where is the way out of here is the question. Oh, hello, thiefy. Okay, there's the way to level one. We need to get out of the dungeon altogether. Uh oh, there's a thief behind us and a rat. Oh, everything's behind us, oh dear. Bat, there's another ranger and a thief. And there's lots of enemies surrounding us here. This is not good. This is not what we want to happen. I really need to find a way out of this place. Now we can hide down in this. If we can find a corridor that's like this without doors at the, the end of it. It means you can you can just go down to the end of the corridor and wait for the enemies to come to you. And it means you know that they're not going to come through doors to the side of you. Um, the problem is I don't know where the way out of this dungeon is. We need the stairs back to the surface. Preferably before we die. There we go. There we go. So we, we actually did gain hit points there. We now have 1,278. We've gained quite a lot of coin as well. So that is good. We're going to enter back into the dungeon. And do the same again. But this time, hopefully, hopefully we will find what we are looking for, which is a gelatinous cube. So again, we're going to make our way down to floor three. If we can find that, it's very easy to get lost and disoriented in these dungeons. Okay, climb down. Now, this time I think we have one right in front of us there. Actually, I forgot to take our armour off, so we'll do that first of all. And yes, we have a gelatinous cube approaching us and it is dead. Which means we have completed our mission. There's another one. And another one. Yeah, so this time we have multiple gelatinous cubes in quick succession. We also have Viper. I don't think we saw any Vipers the last time. And another gelatinous cube. So there's loads of them this time. So it's, it really is just your luck. Uh, we're going to make our way back out of here. We will ready our armour once again, which was the plate mail. And we simply just need to get out of the dungeon now. However we do that, where is the way out? Ah, giant rats and giant bats. Okay, there's still some rats and stuff here. We have several coffins that we can open. Where is the stairs? We need to find that. There we go, that will get us back to level one. And we can climb out to level zero. So we're back up, we've still got over a thousand hit points, which is fine at the moment. And um, that should go up fairly rapidly um, once we get to the lower levels of the dungeon and we start getting more experience for killing some of the enemies. Um, in the meantime, though, we did uh, kill the gelatinous cube. So, with that, we can head back down to the castle of the Lost King. And if we enter in here, we can go tell him that we killed his gelatinous cube. 
Ah, Svengard, thou hast completed my quest. For this I shall teach thee that it requires all four gems to launch a time machine. The king gives thee a red gem. Okay. So we need four gems to launch a time machine, and that is one of them. It means we need another three. So, it looks like we'll be doing quests similar to that for another three kings. The quest we're doing for Lord British, though, is something slightly different. The, we will get gems for defeating enemies for kings. Lord British wanted us to find a... Oh, we're getting shot by a ship here. We're going to enter the town. Um, yeah, Lord British wanted us to find the Grave of the Lost Souls. Um, now, have we got any better transport available yet? We can now buy an air car, which we are going to do. We're going to do that. We're going to get an air car, which is just the best. Um, we'll grab that. And... We will also just check and see if there's any more armor available. We can now get the vacuum suit and the reflect suit as well. We're going to just go all out and get the reflect suit, which is pretty much the best armor you can get. Um, we can also get some different weapons here, but we're going to do something different with the weapons. We'll get that sorted out soon. We'll get some more food. So again, we will get, I think this time we'll get 30 foods that will put us over 500 almost 600 food there and what we're going to do is we're going to take our air car which is conveniently parked here so we're going to exit um oops we're going to exit our horse and board our air car and we're going to promptly get away from those guys um so this is an air car. The only thing that you can't really do with an air car is pass through these woods, but it can go over land and water, which is very useful. Uh, more useful than a boat, which you can you'd have to park at um, at the seaside and then um, come back and get it later. Now we we're looking for the grave of the lost souls, and there's several of these pillars dotted around the place. This one is the Pillar of the Argonauts, and we found a dagger here as well. That's not the pillar that we were looking for, though. Here's another one. This is the Pillar of Ozymandias, and we have gained one wisdom. Um, one pedestal, so these words appear. My name is Ozymandias, King of Kings. Look at my works, ye mighty and despair. This goes by quite quickly. Nothing beside remains. You feel a strange force. So the first time we looked at that, we did gain one wisdom, but it didn't do anything the, the subsequent times. No. Oh, here's another one. So this one is the Grave of the Lost Soul. A quest has been completed and we have ghost, we've gained two stamina as well. But it doesn't do anything the second time. So we'll go back up. This was the, the Pillar of Ozymandias. But once again, it gives us one wisdom. Now, the trick here, basically, this is how you get your attributes up in the game. Um, essentially, if you visit a pillar, it will increase one of your attributes. Um, if you visit a different pillar, it will increase a different attribute. And as long as you don't visit the same pillar twice in a row, you can continue increasing your attributes like that. It's only increased it by one or two there, but as you progress, it will increase it by higher amounts as you get closer to maxing it out. So it does actually, doesn't actually take as long as you might think. Uh, this one's a slightly different one. This is the Pillar of the Argonauts, and this will give us the... Uh, it'll give us a weapon each time that we... Each time that we uh, go to it. So interestingly enough, that gave us a mace. That would suggest that the mace that we had was probably stolen from us at some point. Um, basically, it gives you the weakest weapon that you don't already have. Um, we're going to have to fight this thing to get past, aren't we? That's a dragon turtle. It's not all that strong, so that's fine. But we did complete that mission for Lord British, so with that we will go back to here. And we'll speak to Lord British. Ah, Svengard, thou hast completed thy quest. For this I will give you eight points of strength. Excellent. So that is how you upgrade your strength. Um, 
what we're going to do, essentially, is um, we're going to do this a bunch of times. So we're going to we're going to speak to him again. Again, offer our service. He's going to send us back to the grave of the lost soul, and we can do this repeatedly. So uh, this is another kind of grinding. Um, as well as the grinding in the dungeons, we've got grinding in the overworld. And in this case, it will be... Basically, we're just going to pop by all of these as we go past. So we'll go to this one. Uh, we've, we, that was the last one we went to, so it doesn't do anything this time. We'll go there on the way back. Um, on the way down as well, we'll pop to the Pillar of Ozymandias. We'll get two wisdom for doing that. We'll travel down here, back to the Grave of the Lost Souls. Get two stamina for doing that. On the way back up, we'll pop in here on the way back as well, which will give us another two wisdom. And we'll pop back up here, and on the way back, we'll go through the Pillar of the Argonauts, which this time gives us an axe. So we're getting a slightly better weapon each time we go by. And we'll head back to Lord British's castle. And speak to him once again. And we get seven points of strength. So if we look at our stats now, we'll see our strength has gone up to 45. Um, our other stats are starting to go up a little bit as well. So, um, And we've collected some, some more weapons here. So what we're going to do... Um, is just I'm going to repeat this a few times. Um, just get some of our stats up here. Um, and we'll reconvene in just a moment, um, just to see where that's gonna gonna actually get us. Um, so um, bear with me a moment while I do that. Okay, we're back, and we've been going back and forward between those those three signposts for a wee while, um, and coming back to Lord British for his strength quest. So basically, our stats are now looking a bit more uh, a bit more durable. We have seventy strength, and our stamina and wisdom are both maxed out at ninety nine. Um, we have also collected a few weapons from the Pillar of the Argonauts. So um, as you can see down the, the kind of right hand side there, we have the axe, the rope and spikes, the sword, the great sword. We're currently using bow and arrows. We also have an amulet and a wand. Um, they're not the best weapons in the game yet, but we will um, add a few more weapons down the line. We should get the, the pretty much the best weapons in the game. So we'll be going back there at some point soon. In the meantime, though, I'm done with this quest for just now. I think I'm quite happy with her, where her strength is sitting at the moment, so we'll keep that um, there for just now. So, with that, what have we done today? We have essentially... Um, we have been down through the, the dungeons and killed a gelatinous cube for the Lost King, and he has rewarded us with the red gem, as well as the information that we need four gems in order to run a time machine. We have also went on a mission for Lord British to the Grave of the Lost Souls, repeatedly, and been given a reward of extra strength for that. Um, our hit points are looking a little bit low, but um, we can grind that up shortly. And with that, we are basically going to be leaving the lands of Lord British. We are now going to cross over the ocean, past where the Pillar of the Argonauts is and hopefully we should be in the lands of the Feudal Lords which is where we're going to begin the next video so this is a pretty good time to to call this the end of the current video we've made a little bit of progress there in terms of our mission things will begin to make more sense as we go through further why do we need a time machine we'll find out um, at some point in the meantime, though, thank you very much for watching. I hope you have enjoyed this so far. Um, if you have, give us a like, leave us some feedback in the comments, and subscribe if you want to see more of this kind of stuff. Thank you once again, and I will catch you next time. See you later.